Welcome to God's Vision in Motion. I'm Evangelist Willie Smith along with my beautiful wife once again to continue to bring you the Word of God. And today, uh, before we get into it, we always have a word of prayer. Thank God that we, Father God, we thank you and we praise you once again for this day that you have blessed us with, for this is the day that you have made and we certainly always rejoice in it, Father God, and we thank you for your word, that your word will go forth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding us. We thank you, Father God, for those out there that have ears to hear will be able to hear something. They will grasp your word, Father God, to have their understanding will be open, that they may know what is the hope which you have called them, that we be able to be a beacon of light to them, that we can say something that will encourage them to do like they did in the book of Acts, to search the scripture to find out if those are things are so that we are saying. And we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And once again, we I can't get away from this. My wife and I have talked about it all week long, about the Holy Spirit within and salvation, because this is where it's all started. Because if you don't get salvation down, and, 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 and disobedient to the gifts of the Spirit and all these different things, mainly the Holy Spirit, I mean the, the gift of salvation is imperative. And know when you came in as Gentiles. We came in, the book of Ephesians talks about that, how we were Gentiles. We was in the world without God and without hope. We can look back and see some of the things that God did under the covenant and under the law. But thank God for grace. And this is a time the church really need to find out what we have under grace, what we can do. What did Jesus do for us? Paul said, preach the cross. Preach the cross and Jesus Christ, and that's what it is. Jesus Christ and him crucified for our salvation. Well, because we have a lot of people have itching ears. They want to hear something new, something strange when they don't even know the covenant <clears throat> that they have, don't even know what God had provided for them. And I say that because I could see, and when I hear people talking, I know right away based upon the word, and that's how I can say it, what they're doing, because I know the word, I study. I search out the scriptures daily, uh, sometimes all day long searching the scriptures because I want to be right. If anybody can be right, I can, you know, because it's available to me. I can read a, a, I can read a little bit, but today what we want to do, we're still talking about the Holy Spirit. We're still talking about, I said, the Holy the salvation first, then the Holy Spirit within. If you, have, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, at the end we'll give you an opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit because it's imperative. But before I get into that, honey, I want you to turn uh, uh, to John chapter 16. And we're going to look at what I said, what, verse 15, uh, 16, verse, start at verse 7. From 7 to 15. And 15 uh, 16. Yeah, 16, mm -hmm. verses 7. We're going to start that because I want to show you uh, the layout, the pattern here that what we are doing, and I see it in the church where we talk about sin, we're talking about obeying God and disobedience to this and this. But when you refuse this, you're in disobedience. That's what the scripture, I didn't say it, but we're going to show you from the scripture when you reject the Holy Spirit. And I had a conversation with a young person the other day come inviting and uh, want to invite me to a church. And I was he opened up and started asking me about salvation. And so I began to ask them about things that they believe. What do they believe and preach before I go over there because I know if I go there and they're not doing this, I'm going to be kind of asking some questions. Well, why not? You know, and every every person that's born again ought to want to know something about what place you're going to. What do they believe and teach and hold fast to? Because one of the things that God looked for us to do is to be faithful. Be faithful to what we believe. So if someone asks us a question, because there are a lot of confusion going on in the body of Christ today. And it's all centered around little stuff. You know, even if you go, you belong to a church and you come up and study the Bible and read and come and say something that they don't ask you to come tell, show them from the scripture. They're just getting mad and get puffed up. 
behind your back. You know, you, we say when you feel with the Spirit, I thank God every day that I receive the gift of the Spirit. When you re feel with the Spirit, you can know some things. Nobody have to come write you a letter or tell you this or that. You just sense something is not right. You just know it. And the Holy Spirit right now, oh, what was that? Oh, yeah. Uh, John 16, uh, verse 7. This is the King James Version. Mm -hmm. Did you want to chapter, read that? Yes. Okay. Uh, verse, uh, start at verse John 7. John 16, chapter 16, and uh, verse 7. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of, me, of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Amen. And this is what he's talking about. This is why it's so important to know the word of God. Because what he would do as you begin to study the word of God, the Holy Spirit would, to, would begin to, it's like yes and no. Yes and amen to mm -hmm. you. That's true. And when you walk into a place and you know that they're not the word of God, the Holy Spirit will give you a little nudge. Mm -hmm. He will take it, the word of God. He, that you, When you study this word, I don't care who's saying it or who's a bishop or where it come from. If it doesn't line up with this word, it's not the word of God. It must line up with the word of God. The Bible says this, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So there must be other scriptures based upon the subject lesson that you're talking about, in other words, to get true. So when the spirit of truth comes, because God is not the author of confusion. Now, let's go to, uh, I want to go on, I want to lay a foundation here before I get to the meat of what we're talking about. And this foundation, when I was talking earlier about disobedience, uh, the first one was John, what we said, John chapter 15. Yes. I said John chapter 15 and what is that, 10? Verse 10. 15 and 10. Okay, 15. And 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall hide, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Mm hmm these go ahead okay these things have i spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full and we see here another in this uh, verse 12 it says and this is my commandment that you love one another as i have loved you and this is the whole thing about it uh we talk a lot of things about love and Mm -hmm. and, and this in the, ch the church here, what we see here, all these things I'm laying out as commandments. They're not a suggestion. Love is not, not because this person is good. If you and I just love on each other, but the whole bottom line, when somebody come against you, how do you operate in love? <laughs> how do you operate in love? Because you don't agree mm -hmm. with what they said that the word is saying. And the whole bottom line is, you never really have confronted them about, or whoever it is, you need to be able to go to the person, just like the Bible talks about, if you have all the guests won. You go to the person, find them, well, where, the, where did you find this at in, the, in Scripture? In other words, 
examine it. You know, if you're elders, you ought to be able to examine what's being said based upon the, the scriptures. Because you and I know we, uh, uh, I remember one time a person came against us. I was a, <laughs> I think I was a deacon at that particular time at this, at this church. They made me a deacon. I went there to kind of help them raise up, you know, help them with ministry. I didn't go there to looking for anything other than to help lift up Jesus. But then these people had got behind our backs and went to the pastor and talked about talked about us. One of them so boldly he even wrote a, a had a, a, a tablet <laughs> on uh, about about me. And I said, Well, wait a minute, Pastor. I said, I thought we went in and we were talking to the pastor about. I said, Well, wait a minute. The whole thing is out of order for the simple reason these people never even talked to us. Because I tell you, if you have all the guests in it, you go to them first. And he should have directed them. The first thing he should have done was said, well, have you spoke to them about the situation? In fact, about what they were talking about really wasn't none of their business, <laughs> period. But I don't want to go too much into that because I know it happened in a whole lot of places. That's why today we see so many people running here and running there. And they go over there for a while and, you know, people get mad with them and, you know, they grab them in the first day and love on them and love on them and that person's still going through some things that they don't understand. But the thing about it, if we practice this all the time, not just for a motive that you have behind it, but if we're practicing love and allow the Holy Spirit to help us love, because in the natural you can't do it, because the Bible tells us without me, you can do nothing. So the whole bottom line, the Holy Spirit will help you to love that person that it look like there ain't no way of that relative. Or in some cases, the wife. Because you sometimes we marry, get married, and, and you're unequally yoked with a person that have no <laughs> vision for the things of God. But you got into this, and now you become a Christian, and you think that they're going to just follow along with you because you're a Christian. You're going to really have a problem in that area. And that's why God was warning us not to be unequally yoked. And it wasn't talking about color. As some have used this towards uh, black people, uh, white, uh, black and white. Uh, they used this years ago. I don't know what they're doing. But I know years ago, uh, people go in for counseling or something. And maybe they want to marry another uh, ethnic uh, person. And, and they would tell them. Well, and Sean Familiar said, well, if they don't know the scriptures, how would they know? What is, what, well, I just believe the priest. I believe the priest, you know, he ought to know because he's the priest and never show you the scripture other than what they believe, their denomination believe. Well, is he a Methodist? You know, we all, they all have these kind of little, what you call them, little, <laughs> little foxes. You know, are you a Baptist? Oh, you this or you that, and God is not interested in none of that kind of stuff uh, under this denomination. And we got we got people do all kind of crazy stuff in, in ministry, but you don't know what they're doing if you don't know the word, if you're not searching out the scripture. And the whole bottom line is Jesus said, not only that, he would be in you. So the comforter, we just read here, how, went, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father was saying in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And then he goes on to say in verse 27, peace I leave with you. My peace, not the kind the world have, because the world kind, if you're looking for the world to give you some peace, it just, it's like putting a band-aid on a great big sore. You got a great big sore and you slap a band-aid for it do for a little while. The minute you stumble, well, you <laughs> they look at us, they watching you, and you go up one day and the next day you back down. Why? But but see, God's not like that. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for the mercy and the grace of God. And God is love. God don't change because you do. How bad you get bad, how bad you jump, and how bad you used to be, all that. God doesn't change. The Bible says God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he said, God is love. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's commanding us to love one another. Now, did I say uh, uh, 
where we going from here, honey, because I want to stay on track until I get over here about the Holy Stock and about the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, but I ask you to help keep me on, <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep me on, on, on what I call it? Keep on me track. On track. <laughs> okay, and uh, what? Okay, now do you want me to read this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Warren Berger. Okay. Okay, John, John 14, verse 15. In the KJV Bible. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. But if ye love me, keep my commandments. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is one of the things that I want to show before I get into all the other things. He said, if you ask anything in my name, and this has to be qualified, anything doesn't mean what you think it means because we're talking to Christians and your Christian lifestyle is not like I want somebody else's wife. I want somebody else's, I can just ask God for anything. No, he's talking about everything, godly, anything that's godly, not just anything. And that's why I said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, so you have to find out what, what am I supposed to do? What am I look? in other words, based upon this scripture, it's not at face value as you think. And then after you look at it and say, I can just ask, ask for anything. But then you're living like a dog. You're, you're doing all kind of crazy stuff. So he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, then you got to know what the commandments are. Absolutely. And all the words to do. And then he said, I, verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide, may abide with you. Abide. Abide with you forever. Now we got people go around telling people you need a fresh. <laughs> you need a refill. You need to freshen up. The holy, you need to get a fresh, a uh, uh, fresh anointing. God doesn't have nothing that's stale, or uh, either go stale. In other words, He tell you like when He did in the, the children of Israel when He was feeding them with manna. Don't get it. Don't just for one day at a time. Not to stock it up and save it because the whole thing about it. And then he goes on in verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither know him, but you know him while he dwell with you and shall be in you. And then he goes on to say verse 18. I like this because he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That's a promise. That's a promise. And if the whole thing about it is that when you have the promises of God and he's looking for us to whatever he has provided for us on the cross, what he provided for in uh, Second Peter, I believe he said he given us all things pertain to life and godliness so that you don't be confused. So when the end time is coming and it's coming fast that we can it's approaching us fast every day. I mean, uh, the devil is running rampant, trying to kill off all the children, trying to confuse us, and in, 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 in trying to confuse them in school before they could even get get started good. But this is nothing new. The devil always tried to kill the children, like they tried to get kill Moses and those back there that they and God allowed it. But the whole bottom line, payday is coming. Judgment is coming, and it's coming fast. And with the Holy Spirit, you will know what's around the corner. When you get filled with the Holy receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, he's your helper. He's your comforter. A lot of time I notice that you go to some place at night, and, and, and those that claim they have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, say they say. But every week, if you look at the altar, or what they call the altar, it's, full, it's flooded with folk. The whole church is empty water. Going up there in the Bible, in what is that, Luke chapter 10, uh, 10, 19. You don't have to turn that. I'm just talking about if you don't understand where it's at, just look at 10, 19, Luke chapter 10, 19. He said, I've given you authority. I've given you power over all the enemy. So if you got the power, you're going to have the, the comforter if you receive the Holy Spirit to help you. Well, why you got to go run into, when you're going to stand up, and say, I'm going to live for God for my, 
Uh, this is, and this is what he wanted you to do because he's seen so much abuse in churches. He's seen in the body of Christ, I would say. He's seen so much of his people are being abused because they're being worked, trying to work and do all kind of things, not understanding what grace is all about, not finding out Lord, what you want me to do. I'm getting my marching order from some some guy maybe started the whole thing, and the Bible tells us that. They started with us, but now they're not with us, with him, not with us. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible is talking about, those that started with us. In, in Romans chapter, I think it's chapter 2, verse the one started off, it said they, when they knew him, they glorified him not. It became vain in their own imagination. In 2 Timothy, it talks about how they would have gather around them a bunch of men with itching ears, want to hear something, you know, want to know, and just a position to be around there to look big, around the church somewhere doing something, doing nothing. God have called none of them to do none of it. And, I, and, I, and the reason I can say that, you got to know the word. You know, if you've been called, say, for instance, you've been called a preacher, a preacher. Well, how come you ain't doing that? Why am I standing around acting like I'm a usher when, you know, if, if I've been called to preach somewhere? If I had a church somewhere, when I dropped it, if I dropped the church, what I was doing that God called me to do, I'm in disobedience because I'm not doing what he called me to do. I might be doing what everybody else want me to do, but I have to ignore the commandments that he's given us. We see that all the time. And we'll be anointed. Right, amen. And it'd be hard. It'd always be something else to, to try to draw people in. And we find the only thing that I know that would draw people in is see the miracles, not the, not the type of miracles that we see to, you know, today because a lot of times people, I've seen this happen, people coming through the churches, uh, you walk in and they're taking pictures of uh, a flood of folks at the altar. And then they send them over to another church so all these folk got saved. And they don't even know they even give off the car. <laughs> uh, uh, all these folk got received the Holy Spirit. And if you go and challenge them, say, where is the lift? Where, what at? Did they fill out some kind of, become members? They won't have it. You know? So the whole bottom line is it's like deception. And the whole thing about me, I just cannot, even though sometimes I've been tempted to jump into something, but the Holy Spirit just would not let me. I wanted to to give up all my, everything, because you and I, everything we, uh, everywhere we've been, including baseball, football, you coach, I coach, everything we did, we jumped in it with everything oh, that we had. Yes. We ran the snack ball. <laughs> I mean, at, at one school, I wasn't working there at the school, but since you was in it, I was, I was helping run the snack ball and all the kind of stuff that they did. But we've been doing this all out ever since we've been together. Whatever you were doing, <laughs> uh, if I was coaching, you was keeping school. You had my scorebook, keeping the records and keeping the kids dressed up and looking good. You know, we didn't just say you got to do this to do. But we had a way of uh, being involved in whatever we were doing. But in some places I've been, the Holy Spirit just wouldn't let me. And I know that, even though I I had said it all. My, you know how you want to get involved in something. I get that little. Little thing that's shaking my spirit. Huh? No, not here. not here. You know, and you want to go. You want to be connected and feel like you, this is a. You want your children to be connected to something. You know, to follow because this is a thing of. Uh, that should be a family thing. You know, if anybody gets saved going to a church and he don't want his family go going, don't want his family involved in it. I wonder about that. Place. What is he doing? He don't want his family. Cause first thing I want to do is find a place that I could take my whole family, and then be able to trust that they're gonna be under people that's gonna be feed them the word of God. And we did that. Yes. And we saw them growing in the things of God, you know. And and uh, when we got ready to go to church, I said, Hey, we all going to church. Everybody loaded up. With the church, they go to their place, we go to ours, you know. But the whole bottom line is then we had our youngest son, he always wanted to go with the adults. 
because he was learning. He was learning. I mean, <laughs> you didn't want to go out there and play no game. He always liked to play his own with his cars and stuff like that. But when he went to church, he wanted to hear the word. And that he did. <laughs> You know, you go down to the place. Not only did he, uh, he didn't just go, he, he absorbed the word. Just Amen. Like a sponge. We were really pleased. And he didn't go down to patty cake, no, <laughs> you know, and, and eat little cookies and all that kind of stuff, you know. But he went there for the word. Because a lot of time I didn't even know he had came in. As I was ushering, I look up. Well, that TJ, then we, the, uh, us, right, the usher start telling us, hey, let him come to the prayer circle with us. You know, you, you could come into the circle with us and listen to all the other men talk about where they came, you know, because sometimes we give testimonies and mm -hmm. a lot of times we have uh, what you call uh, praise reports. Yes. Or we pray for one another and mm -hmm. we come back the next week or next month, so we want to find out. Some results. Yes, yeah, some results. Done what, for what? Them. Yes. And uh, we got a lot of that. You know, we wanted to hear praise reports. If mm -hmm. we were praying for someone and he was going through something with it, maybe a, a family thing or with his wife and different things, and he'd come back to the next week or so and said, Man, pray, and, and we all rejoiced in that. Yes. You know, and that's the kind of ministry we grew up where they encourage that mm -hmm. you know to find out you don't want to and then he wanted you to know exactly who so-and-so's wife is mm -hmm. who's who you got who you got you come in every week you know in some place you could wear different like you do sometimes oh, you know no. <laughs> put on something different mm -hmm. you know if, if somebody come in if you're used to wearing long wigs and you don't know who you got up under there but he wants to you know if you're on the usher board a deacon hanging around the church, he didn't want to see you out there hugging and going on all locked up with somebody else's wife all the time, you know, because he, it was a teaching ministry. Mm -hmm. Very. And I loved the man because, not because he just said everything I liked to hear, because he was a teacher. He, he, he pounded this in us, you know, uh, by example. And I would like to also uh, stick a pen right there because sometimes people will say, well, this pastor, he don't do this in the community, don't do that. And I know that's a lie because I was helping to do it. Mm -hmm. Giving to the poor, taking, uh, I had to make sure the trucks and things were serviced to go to the men's home. They had a men's home up in Pasadena somewhere and I took literature and clothing and different things up to that place for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and so the thing about, and the good news about he taught me this, don't be bragging about what you're doing. Don't be, you know, you got to get up and tell, well, you know, we we did all this, like toys and different things that would come in for the, the young people. You know, he just give it to the congregation and the congregation would do whatever was necessary. The ushers and the leaders would take care of it. He didn't get involved in a whole lot of that kind of stuff, but he made sure that they had an uh, organization that would take care of it and do it. So it taught me a whole lot about how to how to do things, how to walk as a Christian person that I don't have to be doing something and then come beating on my look what we done. We're the only one doing it. <laughs> we 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 reached we reached it down and out of but if you're not saved, this is my thing about that. If a person is not saved, you're already are down and out. You don't have to drink no liquor. You don't have to be on no drugs. You're already there. You start out that or down and out of, without Christ, without Jesus in your life. You already, the Bible says you're already down. Now, that's what the Bible says. And so the thing, the good news is, about, let me move on with the, the what was that number three? Was that number yes. three I was talking about? This the is, commandment. You are now on. You are now in John fifteen fourteen. I thought I read that. Fifteen, about my friend. Fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fourteen, uh, chapter fifteen, verse fourteen. This is my command: that you love one another. I thought I read. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He should give you another comfort, and He should give, and He should abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. Yes. So, I will not leave you comfortable. I will come to you in a little while in the world 
see me no more, but you see me because I live in you and you shall also live also live also. But that day you should know that I am in the Father and the Father in me. And this is the thing that the Holy Spirit will do. Uh, I, I want to rush on with this. So give me the other script in Acts. Is it com oh, yes. oh, yeah, He commanded them. Acts, Acts 1. Yeah, let's go over there. When we, we're moving into the meat of the thing, of the Holy Spirit. What I wanted you to really see is this, this command, not so suggestion, and that's why I was so adamant about reading those scriptures right there, because he's talking about if you love me, mm -hmm. keep my commandments. That's where you can know that God loves you, by keeping his commandments. You don't have to feel nothing. You don't have to have no goosebumps on Sunday. You just know I'm doing the will of God. That way you can go. He, let God know you love him by doing what he asks you to do in his word. Now, where are you at? at uh, Acts? Acts 1-2. Okay. Until the day in which he was taken up after that, through the, whole, through the Holy Ghost. You see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Through the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Until the day in which he was taken up after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostle whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself at, alive after his passion. His passion for many infallible proof, being seen of them forty days, speaking of the thing pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded that we go, there we go again, commanded them, mm -hmm. commanded, <coughs> commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Of the Father, now I want you to see that. Of the Father, not Jesus. He's the one. The Father's the one that's going to send us the Holy Spirit. Ain't no use of you trying to pray to Jesus for the Holy Spirit. It's the Father. He said, I'll pray to the Father, and he'll give you and for the Father, which which you have heard of me. But John, truly, I don't want to go there because we all know John what John did. But John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost many days hence. So the whole thing about it, you got people thinking that because when they got saved and, it's, and had water baptism, and they said when they raised them up out of the water, so now we baptize you in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When they do that, they think they received the Holy Spirit then. Unfortunately, but they did. This is a thing where to be born of the Spirit is for salvation only for salvation, but to be filled with the Spirit is for power, to be imparted to you in the person of the Holy Spirit. And that's that's uh, that's something that every, not one or two, because some think that they have a gift in a, that we're going to, this is going to be part of our lesson as we go along, that they have a gift that God has given them. And the whole thing about it, if we find out how these gifts work, as he wills. So if it's a gift, if, if you just have the gift, you could work it either way you wanted to. It wouldn't be because God had nothing to do with it. He give you the gift. You can do what you want to do with it. In my my thinking, what, what do you think? If he give you a gift, but if he's working it as you will, it's like I'm just uh, what you call it, uh, 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 what you would call it, a uh, a. Uh, 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 I'm just an incubator. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit within me until he get ready to use it. Is that what you see? Yeah. And so that's the whole thing about, but the whole thing, we'll see that as we go along. But the the thing that I want you to see is where, where you missed it as a minister or just a believer. Because some said went out with the early church. You got all kind of stuff going on. This is one of the things that the devil fight worse than anything about the, <clears> keeping <throat> you out of the Holy Spirit. And then he talks about with the evidence. Well, I'm filled with the Spirit, but I don't speak with tongues. And we see this. You see the scriptures and he said all of them spoke with tongues. They weren't up jumping around. They didn't call the praise team to minister to the, the you know, in other words, wild people. They was the whole thing about it, God is so gracious that he show us 
that we don't have to be taken in by somebody else. The Holy Spirit, he said, they were sitting. They weren't up jumping around or laying, coming over, doing all kinds of stuff. They was, in other words, they were sitting. And we're going to see this in the scripture. Uh, the word that I was looking for, want you to really get out there, believers, is that he commanded you. He commanded you, just like what he tells you about how to, how to live. Since you learned, since you received Christ Jesus, he said, walk in him. That's what he's telling us to do it here. He commanded, this is, to me, this is more stiff a commandment than when he talked about walking in him. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Now, the whole bottom line is, and then, oh, let's go over to, uh, you keeping me on course? Yes, Acts 2. Okay, let's go over to verse 2, and I want you to read that. Chapter 2, verse 1. Oh, chapter 2, verse 1. Yes, it's chapter 2, verse 2. Yeah, Acts 2. Yes, 2, 1. Mm. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, <clears throat> excuse me, they were, all, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound, and there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Remember, it says, as of a, my, a mighty rushing wind. Excuse me. <clears throat> And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Brother, and that's the point that I want you to see right here. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. You have to do the speaking, and then he will give you the utterance. Now, we've got uh, people are saying all kind of stuff about, I got, I received the Holy Ghost, but I don't have to speak in tongue. Well, you don't have to speak in tongue, period. But you really don't have to speak in tongue, but this commandment that I'm talking about was for a purpose, that you can know what we can, as we go over in the book of Hebrews, it talks about how God would put these laws into your heart. We are worshiping our Heavenly Father. The Bible says, I, I believe it's in John, uh, or that it talks about John chapter 4, I believe it is. John chapter 4. We don't have to turn that on. But he talked about God is a spirit. And so since he's a spirit, to reach him and to touch him, we have to be in the operate in the spirit, even though we're in our flesh and body, but our spirit is what he wants to do, he wants you to do, it be born of the Spirit is for salvation. But to be filled with the Spirit is for the power. In other words, to be able to make the what you the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus. He would make it more real to you about your salvation. Once you feel with the Holy Spirit and, and with the speaking of the tongue, the Bible talks about and uh, uh, edifying yourself, praying in the Holy Ghost. But how can you edify and build yourself up? And you don't even believe in the Holy Ghost. You, you're already in disobedience when you say, well, we don't, we don't encourage that at our, 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 <coughs> our church. Uh, we believe in it, but uh, we don't encourage it. Well, what you're doing is really crippling your people there, not to be able to do the thing Jesus had called you to do. You, you, have, you, you have a church, you call, got a name on it, but the whole bottom line is, in order to have the administration operate in your church, you need the gifts of the Spirit to, to be able to direct those gifts that have been put in the church. And without, the Bible, like he said, without me, you can do nothing. And then he tells us in Revelation how we've left our first love. Why? You're not doing what Jesus said do. He, this was the beginning of the church age. All these other script, all these other is Old Testament. This is the New Testament. He said, uh, "Establish upon better promises." But He's given us these gifts. <coughs> Place these book that I said. Let's see. I want to ask a question here. Did I read? Why are you calling me? What was that? Uh, let's go over to Luke That's chapter good. six, six forty six. Mm -hmm. Luke six. Yeah, I'm already there. 
Luke 6, 46, and he says this. And why calleth me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Whosoever come to me and heareth my saying, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. And he's talking about who, how you build a house, the foundation of the thing, what you're going to build it up on. And this rock, we're going to build our house. What we're building our house is upon Jesus Christ and him crucified only. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I believe one of the things that I believe, and it talks about being ashamed. Do I have that, uh, Luke, what is that, Mark? Mark 8, 38. I believe it's Mark. Mark 8, 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my word and, his, and this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed of him when he come in into come in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. So they're telling you right there, if you're ashamed, and a lot of times we're ashamed because of the ridicule that we get from our families. If you know if you got a, if you're living in a house and maybe you're the only one that's in there saved, and you come out, you know you got to be careful with you know like speaking in with tongue. Well, they, they think you're crazy. You can do all this other stuff and you can watch ET and all these other little monsters, but they have a voice. I mean, you got more cartoons not having little voices than you know than the real people today. You know the cartoons, the big cartoons, the big time at the theater. Then if you have one of those things, what they call them, aliens, that come out wherever they say they're coming from, you know, they always do a thing where the aliens come out, well, they always can talk. And nobody, nobody can pay that. They believe in that kind of stuff. They do. They believe in that kind of stuff. But when it comes down to speaking in other tongues, God, something God has given, something wrong with it. Yeah, had to question it. Well, they had to question it. You know, they get, they get paranoid. It all says, and if we go over in, uh, uh, what is that, Luke chapter 11. Let's go over there. Luke chapter. Is that about the Holy Spirit? It talks about the, who, uh, is it 11? That he would get a Holy Spirit to those who. Oh, yeah. That's probably the one that asks. Okay, you do want to read that? You want to start in verse 10. Okay. Wait a minute. What, there's, actually, you might want to start sooner. Hmm? You want to start here, and I say unto you, and that's the beginning of Mm -hmm. You're talking about the Holy Spirit to them that mm -hmm. ask, right? Yeah. Right there, yeah, 12. Okay, Luke um, 11, verse 12, it says, or if, this is Jesus speaking, or if he shall ask, in, if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Do you sure, are you sure you want to start there? No, start at the beginning <laughs> of that. Okay. I'm going to start at verse 9. Okay. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of his, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. And this was something Jesus, this was over here where it called a mall prayer. Not it calls the Lord's Prayer, but it's a mall prayer that uh that uh but Jesus went right into this telling them. That wasn't even but he brought that in. Mm -hmm. 
give the Holy Spirit to them that do what? Ask. Say that again. Ask. That's all you have to do is ask. Okay. So the whole bottom line is we want, though we have, we have so much love for our people out there that love God and we know that we want them to have something, you know, the, the, the blessings of the Lord. You're missing out. Not that you'll be better than anybody else. Nobody should be puffed up. Because the Bible said God hate, resist the proud, and give more grace to the humble. But the whole bottom line is you have an advantage that others won't have. This is all it saying you'll have an advantage to do things and hear things and be able to be more blessing, even though that other person will be saved. But if you're going to be in this battlefield, because we're in a war, in a war, in a spiritual battle, and you need the Holy Spirit to be able to help you, because there's, the Bible says the perilous times are already here. Men be lovers of themselves rather than love of, of God. Uh, without natural affection. All these things are coming, and they're coming fast. And just like he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, that day is coming for this world to be destroyed and removed from the things that, and Jesus is coming back to take over because right now we see things that we, I've never thought I'd see some things that we see coming to pass. Never thought I'd live that long. And I knew I needed some power because i like to at least know Going around the block, you better know which way to go now. Because people are running up and just mugging folk just, just, just because they ain't got nothing else to do or the devil told them to do it or something. But right now my time is up, but I want, before I go, an opportunity, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to be saved. You would like to know that you know that you know, and you can know. And God will confirm what I'm telling you once you do follow this. Said, so, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner, and I cannot save myself based upon what I'm hearing, that your word, that you sent your son. I believe that he died on the cross for me. And right now with my mouth, I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord. And you. I believe that you raised him from the dead for my justification. And based upon that, you said I would be saved. And right now, I thank you for my salvation in Jesus' name. And now... Since you're saved, you're just born again because God's going to do what I'm telling you he's going to do. He's going to confirm it with sign following. Now you're a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit. And by proxy, proxy, we say, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is open your mouth and begin to utter, let your vocal cords. And then what you do, you practice this. It's like gibberish. And all of a sudden, after you begin to continue to practice it, you develop your heavenly language. It will develop. After a while, it will be able to just flow from you to the point that you probably won't want to pray in English any longer because you run out of words in English because the devil going to see to that. Because when you're praying, most of the time, you just think about your four no more. But this way, you can be able to intercede for your church, your community. All you have to do is just name it and have the desires in your heart what you want. Because God is not going to bless any mess anyway. I don't care how much. You, you don't have to be worried about some, what, well, what does this happen? What does that have? God is not going to bless no mess. So you don't have to even worry about that. Just begin to open up your mouth and pray in your heavenly language daily. It says you're building up yourself, praying in, your holy, in the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. Let your tongue, oh, 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 oh. let your tongue move. Don't be ashamed. Oh God, be bold with it. You know, forget about what your family and all of them saying. Now they, they, they already saying bad things behind your back about you anyway. So thank you for joining us. It's been good being with you again, honey. And I thank God that we're able to say something out there that someone will grab a hold to it and come to know the Lord and Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, be filled with the Spirit, and become a worker together with him because that's what he's calling us to do. Be workers together with him. In Jesus' name, we thank you. All right.